Now, with the growth regulator herbicides, and if you've looked at either of the labels, there's many specific instructions on how to apply these compounds. And that's because of, A, the sensitivity of many crops to growth regulator herbicides. But you break it down, there's many ways for things to go wrong. One is you have to be aware of off-target particle drift. So that's where there's a lot of emphasis on nozzle type that will be listed on the label, what type of nozzles to use, coarser droplets, and wind speed. Most of the labels are talking about using between 3 and 10 miles an hour is ideal. Some of the labels go up to 15 miles an hour, but you better know your wind direction and what crops are downstream. And then you take a look then is the particle aspects and the wind speed. When you look at this, if you start looking at wind speeds less than three miles an hour, you also have to worry about things called inversions, where warm air sits on top of cold air and then fine particles of the growth regulator herbicide can stay suspended and move an extended period uh, or greater distance, more than you could imagine. It can be sometimes up to a mile and show symptoms at that time. So inversions look for dew, a low-lying fog, and inversions are more probable in the evening, especially if it's moving into a clear sky that night. We also have to worry about volatility. That's that vapor drift that we're talking about where they move as a gas. And that's why, again, it's important to use only the 2,4-D and dicamba herbicides that are registered for use on this technology because those are the herbicides where they've done a lot of work in reducing the volatility. The other thing to keep in mind with the volatility is to check it on the label very closely because if you add things, say, ammonium sulfate or ammonium nitrate into your tank mix, it could decouple the very mechanism that's reducing the volatility. So this is an important thing to note as well. The other big one that we have to consider is looking at spray tank contamination. So you have, you're doing a number of acres and then you shift to another crop. The triple rinsing, the various tank cleaners, all this thing should be adhered to. I think many folks that are doing this on large scale have dedicated sprayers, because keep in mind these things, if they salt out into screens, into the tubes, into the nozzles themselves, it can be very hard to clean out. So those are the big ones, but there's also another one that is just spraying on the wrong crop. So we've mentioned here the Enlist soybeans and the Extend soybeans. Crossing over and getting the wrong herbicide on the wrong technology is going to be very bad. It's a direct application right onto that crop. That's where some people in the South in particular, I don't know if it's going to occur as much here, are going to a flagging technology where they have different colors and designs of flags that symbolize various things. But obviously you need to know before you enter that field what technology you're spraying onto. So in summary of the various ways of concern for having 2,4-D and dicamba move off target is looking at particle drift. Then we have also the volatility type issue, worrying about inversions, with small particles drifting long distances, spray tank contamination, and then human error, just using the wrong chemical on the wrong field.